Utie or ha extra punk no need FM Okay good afternoon and welcome to Neat FM Ghana Munti Good afternoon good afternoon and good afternoon to all your listeners Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon It's a pleasure um, how are you coping with uh, this uh, COVID-19? I think it's been 16 weeks or so a month and, and two weeks since uh, we asked uh, the, the president asked our schools to be closed down. How have you been coping? Yes, um, until 16th March this year, our schools went on closure owing to COVID-19. And if you are talking about private schools, I can tell you that we are finding it very difficult indeed. You see, at the time the closure was announced, we were not ready for it. The closure was announced the 15th. The following day, we had to obey the president and shut down our schools. At the time we shut down our schools, majority of our schools had not retrieved the school fees from their school children. So the month of March ended whereby we hadn't collected fees, but we were pressurized to pay salaries, we were pressurized to make statutory payments in respect of SNEC, Ghana Revenue Authority payee charges, to service loans that some of our proprietors had collected in order to develop their schools, and to meet other running costs. So you can find that it was so difficult for us to continue operating as business entity when there was no income flow. Because you see, with other sectors, other sectors like uh, the, the, the tourism sector, other sectors like um, um, those engaged in buying and selling businesses, in other sectors, at least they are still operating even though at a very low scale. So they are getting a bit of income. But with the education sector and private schools in particular, we are at zero income level now. There's simply no inflows into our schools. And yet we still have electricity bills to pay, we still have water bills to pay, we still have many other commitments that we have to meet. So it's really been very difficult for us. And this was compounded by the fact that our tickets had to be paid even in the month of April. So it became uh, a whole tussle between us, the owners of the schools, and our employees, the teachers, and other administrators in our schools as to how to find salaries to pay them. With the, with the payments of salaries uh, from March and April, uh, I hear a lot of the schools have refused to pay their teachers. Have this been? Uh, have, you, have you heard about this? A lot of schools have not refused to pay. A lot of schools have been unable to pay. You can only pay when you have money in your account, isn't it? So are, are you telling us that with, with, uh, if school is not in session, uh, teachers can't be paid? Well, of course, there are some elite schools, some of the bigger schools, which may have reserves of revenue to pay the teachers. But for the vast majority of us, it's a reality. It's a reality that once we are not collecting uh, school fees, we cannot pay salaries. Because you see, what many people don't know is that many of our schools live from hand to mouth. Okay. You collect the money from uh, parents and you use it to pay bills and sit down and wait again until such time that fees are paid again. So it was virtually impossible for majority of us to pay our, our tickets. Okay. With this uh, payment of uh, teachers' salaries and uh, other commitments that you have to make, we, we had information that a private, uh, Ghana National Association of Private Schools, you have been able to gather a few resources about um, close to 50,000 Ghana cities, and you donated to the uh, COVID fund. Was that donation necessary as you find yourself in this situation? That donation was very necessary. You see, even in the good books, both uh, Bible and Quran, we are admonished to give, even in our poor state. We are admonished that the time you are challenged is the time you should even be giving out books. 
In giving out, you give your widow's might. You cannot give what you don't have. Once you so, don't have, you are still complaining, you are in crisis, you still have to go and give. My sister, the more you give, is the more you even receive. You see, if I have 50 Ghana cities and I give it out, you never know in return how God can bless me with uh, by doubling that amount. I know, I know, but, but, but there's a situation whereby you are finding it difficult to even pay your workers. How do you go and pay, donate outside? Yes. No, but, but that's the point I'm just making. We don't have money, but the little coins we have is what we put together. I mean, look at the amount that other establishments were donating. 200 Ghana One hundred. I mean, 200,000 Ghana 100,000 Ghana cities. Private schools could only afford 50,000. That should tell you, my sister, how hard pressed we are. But how hard and or hard pressed you were or you are, you could yeah. have gathered this 50,000 and at yeah. least sought some of these schools who are uh, less privileged and uh, they are struggling to pay their teachers. You could have contributed to those schools to pay their teachers. How many schools can 50,000 go around and, and pay? It can do a lot, though. <laughs> it can do a lot. I am telling you in terms of someone who is in the industry and know the inside out of the industry. And okay. I'm telling you that this 50,000 cannot pay the staff of up to 10 schools in Ghana. Mm. And besides, the, the important point I keep emphasizing is that, look, we have been more affected by this COVID-19 virus outbreak than any other sector. So, I mean, our parents, who are the ones that pay fees, have been affected. We, the school proprietors, have been affected. Our school children are sitting at home. So if government is appealing to all of us to put together the little resources we have in order to fight this virus, we did that in view of the fact that we are helping government to solve the problem so that we can get back to school. I mean, all those other institutions and establishments that donated, it's not because they had plenty. You don't give only when you have surplus. You give even when you have nothing. That's the reality. And it's not huge, it's not huge amount that proprietors contributed to. The mm. contributions range from 10 Ghana cities to about 200 Ghana cities. The majority were within the range of 10 Ghana cities and 50 Ghana cities each that the proprietors contributed. Okay, we just spoke to uh, the director in charge of the Institute for Education Studies and uh, he was uh, um, giving us suggestions uh, uh, some things that the private schools, if you could have put them in place, it could have questioned you a little to help you uh, with with uh, in this uh, COVID season. Uh, I, w I would like to find out from you, Have has there been any measures that you have put in place in this season to help these children at home? Well, um, a few, what we have been able to do as an association is that we have uh, put together some questions which we sent out electronically to all regions so that they can mail them to parents who will administer to children, you know, to, to keep assessing them, keep them active as they practice these questions. Uh, these were examination questions covering all the subjects from KG up to JHS3. That's something we did as an association. But at the individual level, I know that some schools have also been able to roll out some electronic learning platforms for their parents and children to uh, keep learning while they are at home. Is there any supervisory role that uh, um, uh, this uh, your uh, the association is doing to help check whether they are doing something to help these children? Whether the parents are doing something no, to the help the teachers, I mean. Oh, they, no, once we are at home, teachers cannot be helping the, the, the school children because 
we are admonishing everyone to stay at home. Yes, so that, I, I understand that, but I, I, I'm I'm trying to um find out whether the association has been able to monitor whether teachers are able to send uh, whether home exercises to these children at home to do it. Um, no, the, the association cannot monitor that. It's the individual schools that can monitor whether their teachers are sending out assignments to uh, parents to help their children with or not. But as an association, a whole, the whole association cannot monitor individual schools throughout the country. It will okay. Be quite okay. Um, w w when it comes to uh, certain social interventions that the government has put in place for uh, public schools and others, uh, do you think private schools have been neglected? Um, I don't want to use a very strong word like neglected. What I want to say is that we have not been fully involved in the rollout of the e-learning platforms that government has done. What do I mean? You see, there are some that are free, and you don't need any password or code to access. But I know that with some of the pl learning platforms, particularly at the senior high level, you need a code to access, which means that if you are not within the public school system, and if you are not given that code, you cannot access those particular learning platforms. Okay, okay. Um, talking about this, uh, your uh, paying school fees, you said you could, uh, parents couldn't finish paying uh, school fees, uh, and then this thing came in. Are you uh, still going to uh, demand for school fees for the next, I don't know whether next term or next term? <laughs> no, but, but, but obviously, because you see, we started a term midway through the term, Parents didn't finish paying their commitments. Then we went on holiday. And not, well, I'm saying holiday. We, there was a shutdown. If we resume and continue of the second term, why why shouldn't we ask for the rest of the second term money that we're not paid to be paid to us? Wow. You you <laughs> you ask parents to pay the arrears. No, but we will be teaching and 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 mentoring their children again, isn't it? But well, this, this is a situation whereby uh, the, the academic or uh, the term did not end and uh, the, there was a problem. So yeah. you have to truncate everything and then move yeah, to the house. Yeah, but we are going on to continue with the term, isn't it? Once you are continuing with the term... What about if, if the term elapses before? Pardon me? What about if the term elapses and we enter into a different term? Well, you and I don't know the arrangement that the Ministry of Education will come up with when we resume. We really don't know. Because when you say if the term elapses, there's no way we can go back and just pretend as if a uh, second term had ended and therefore we are into third term. So for some of us, at worst, what we will have to do is that there may be a week or two of revision and then examination to end the second term before you can move into the third term. So in that respect, they'll continue on second term, and therefore the rest of the second term money will have to be paid. I see, I see. So um, talking about the teacher's salary, those yes. who have not been able to pay, when are they going to? When are they going to be paid? Yeah, yeah the teachers. You see, when, when it comes to issues of conditions of service, the association doesn't sign conditions of service agreement with individual teachers. It's the institutions that sign those contracts. So the association cannot direct that every member school, you have to pay salaries for this month and that month. It's quite difficult to do that because the conditions of service even vary across the different schools. There are some schools which by now are probably terminating the contract with their ticket. There are others who are using other clauses like, okay, let me, let's dialogue so that we will give you half salary. There are others who are even strong enough to continue paying the salary. So it's difficult to have, a, you know, a general prescription to say that every school, this is what you need to do. 
Okay. Um. Hmm. I think we would have to end here, Doc. Thank you so very much for this opportunity. Thank you too for your time, Doctor Damasus Toronsong. Hey, Nidine Modu Toronsong, and I on the president of the Ghana National Association of Private Schools. And I what is he? And I am sure you come on. What is he? Memo ye dia ma private schools no papa 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 papa. Na mi bisa no fa. Uh, private schools, no, a teacher for Honoma, Yentia Womaka, and what didn't you move by sign? Yeah, you know, you share term on Asana, a new baby, and a yare, a be try, a queen, a queen. It was your coffee, now, but under one one soon to young Codano school fees. It in a bad day, so on Benesca, at a tria, a teacher for a car. Now, schools need be bro Honoma. One more, just say, one more, no, or a school fees on Benjamin, and no more to a teacher for Neca. And this, eh, ya anye school fees ya, eh, then, so mbeti mi, eh, tu ya teacher for neka, eh, nana ama, eh, o hawi nina, akwa kwa ba, ya, ya sani ne chun kwa mo, eh, fa, ni ya mahu dobe bre, eh, huwa, eh, ya neno, eh, de, eh, si, inti, Dr. Damasos, to Rosong, ona, eh, president, yo, da Ghana National Association of Private Schools, ano, eh, na, ote, si, eh, nekasa, ne, ya nene, so, kwa, kaya, eh, fa, eh, private schools, wamo donation, yomu kwa, eh, fa, COVID-19, eh, trust fund, no, ay, mu, mu, bika, eh, se, mu, nisika, mu, su, su, mu, mu, mu kwa ya ye ya obi e kwa ye bi nti mwusu mwa kwa kwa ye bi enu wa che se e wa suwa mwa ye wwa mwuse ni pa wu nisi kakura e se wwa ya doye ye ye mwum e wusu ya nit 100.9 fm nwa su wutye o ha ek 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 ek